Hello everyone and welcome to your first ActionScript 3 game development tutorial. Alright. So what we're going to do in this tutorial is create a simple flash program that displays a circle. Alright, and this will introduce you to ActionScript 3. Uh, what we plan on doing with this with this series is start it out uh, for beginners that want to get programming and making flash games but have no programming knowledge at all so we're going to uh, introduce them to some basics of action, action script 3 uh, we're not going to go super in depth but we'll teach them everything that they need to know to be able to make a simple game uh, using the library that we're going to use which is called flashpunk all right so what we're going to do first is open up our web browser and go to flash develop Alright, and this is what we're going to be using to create our Flash games. So press download right over here, this big green button. Click on it, and then go down to download. It's, it's right here. Okay, and then once you have that downloaded, what you can do is run it. Well, you have to install it, of course. But um, I have it pinned to my taskbar. If you don't have it, just search Flash Develop over here, and it should show up in your programs. And then upon opening it up, you should have a screen somewhat similar to this. Uh, yours might say, Welcome to Flash Develop. This is your first time running it. Um, this is the home page or whatever. Um, but since I've used it before on my computer, uh, it brings up an untitled basically text document and if you create a project which we're going to be doing in a few seconds and you just press X while all the different files are open next time you open it up all the files will be open again which is really nice so let's get ourselves familiarized with flash develop so we can work with it right uh, you're gonna click create a new project um, if it's not there you can go to file new um, oh wait no project new project all right and we're going to select as3 project this is really important because if you don't do this it'll think that you're programming with something else and it'll get really confused when you try to compile your project all right and what we're going to do is create do first as3 project all right uh choose your location where you want them to save to i've created a folder called flash project and then if you want it to be in its own individual folder which i highly recommend make sure that this is checked. If you don't, as you can see, it'll just save it right to the Flash Projects folder. And doing that, when you have multiple programs in there, it gets really confusing because they're all crammed in there, all their files. Uh, make sure that you create a directory. I highly recommend it. Okay, and then press OK. Um, I've already created that directory. So, giving me a bunch of errors. All right, so what we'll do what I will do instead is go open it back up. Uh, first AS3 project, right here. All right, so this is what it should look like. You should have a bin folder. Um, the files in there we don't need to worry about quite yet. Uh, a lib folder, source folder, and inside the for so <coughs> source folder is. Um, a file called main.as. .as is the file ex extension um, for the um, ActionScript 3 language. I believe it's also the extension for ac ActionScript 2 and probably ActionScript 1, but don't quote me on that. Um, basically, we have a bit of code. 27 lines. Alright, for somebody new to this, this probably looks like quite a bit, but we can uh, reduce it by a lot. Alright, so what we're going to do is erase these, the author lines, uh, take out this import on uh, event, and delete this, and delete this. Alright. What I like to do also is to compress 
quite a bit doing that. I just think it looks neater. Um, that's just my programming style. Um, as you get better at programming and uh, start learning different languages, if you go that far, you'll start to develop um, programming styles, and it'll probably be a bit different for each language because of the way that they're structured and the uh, popular way of programming in that language. Um, so you will just have to figure out what your programming style is as you go. Right? Some people like making everything really compressed. Uh, some people like putting a lot of spaces in their uh, code like I do. But um, enough jibber jabber. We are going to create a small little program that displays a circle. Uh, now, before we start writing any code, I'd like to point out under the project up here, you can go to properties, and this is where you change some of the global settings, like how big the um, screen size is, what the background color is, how many frames per second it runs at. Don't put this very high. All right. I recommend 60 max. If you put it, you know, insanely high, you know, a thousand or something, it's probably not going to run very well on your computer. All right. So, um, let's get to it. What we're going to do first is take a look at this, All right? I'm not going to explain everything in great detail yet, just kind of give you an overview on what stuff is. This is importing a, uh, basically a class. All right, and uh, it's it's a file, and we're going to import another one. Oops, not flash font. Uh, flash dot display dot shape. So what these classes are are things that we can use in our program, and the more you import, the more things you, that are available to you while programming. The more functions you can use, the more. Basically, it gives your program more ability. Um, there's classes for changing how the mouse looks, there's classes for connecting to the internet, there's all sorts of stuff. But for this, we only need sprite, which allows us to display stuff to the screen, and shape, which is going to allow us to draw our circle. All right? So now we need to go right inside public function main, all right? Just just ignore this for now, all right? <clears throat> just focus on the actual code. We'll explain that in a further lesson. Alright, so what you're going to do is type in VAR. That stands for variable, and that's when we are creating variables, obviously. And uh, you can name it whatever you want, but we're going to name it circle. You can name this whatever you want, and it won't change the program one bit. Alright? Uh, and we want it to be a shape. Alright, so creating a variable circle and assigning it the class of shape. Alright, and there's tons of different classes that you can assign to it. You can uh, create integers, which are obviously numbers, strings, which are sequences of words, and all sorts of stuff. That's basically what we're going to be doing in a lot of these tutorials, creating variables and giving them values. So, uh, right now we just have an empty variable. So, we're going to put the equal sign, do new shape, if I can spell all right, so what this does is it actually creates a shape and puts it in the variable. Because when we start, or when we just create it like this, it's completely empty, all right? And this right here actually puts something in it. Now we can uh, take the basic shape and um, decide to do whatever we want with it. But how we're going to do it this time is circle.graphics dot begin fill. Uh, this will allow our program to know that they should begin drawing uh, the shape. Um, so once you press the parentheses, you'll see right here it has arguments, they're called. All right, and it tells you what you need to put there, which is really nice about Flash, which is a really nice thing about Flash at all. All right, and for the color, we're going to do 0x, that's how they start, and then their hex values. H E X hex. All right, and these are also used in HTML and all sorts of stuff. If you don't understand this, uh, we're not going to really cover it. Um, other than the basics, um, just look it up on a 
on Google or something if you really want to know more about it. It's pretty simple. Basically, you have two values for red, two values for green, and two values for blue. It goes from 0, 1, 2, 3, up to 9, and then starts at A to F. So there's 16 values. Right, but what we're going to do this time is do 0, 0, F, F, 0, 0. So this is RGB. Red is going to be set at 0. Um, green is going to be set at 255. And blue is going to be set at 0. All right, and then we do a comma. And the alpha is transparency. So we're going to set it to 1, so it's 100% visible. All right, you can set it to any zone, number between 0 and 1. Technically, you could set it higher, although do anything but yeah and then what we're going to do next is circle dot graphics dot raw circle all right this is actually telling our program that we're creating a circle and the first is the x all right x and y are the most common things for drawing stuff to the screen until you get to 3d then you also put in z axis this is very similar to geometry, algebra, all that stuff, except instead of having this be 0, 0, and then y gets bigger as you go up, it's from the top, all right? So this is 0, 0. This is 0, 900 on my screen. This is um, 1,600, 0 up in this pixel. And then this down here is 1,600, 900. Right, um, it's different for everybody's screen resolutions, but as you go down, the Y gets bigger. As you go to the right, the X gets bigger. So for now, we're just going to put in zero, zero, and it'll when your window comes up, it'll draw it in the upper left-hand corner. Now we need a radius for how big the circle is. All right, going back to geometry, the radius is from the middle to the outer edge. So let's do 50 pixels for now. Okay, put parentheses on it, and don't forget the semicolon. Um, the way that a programming language has the periods and parentheses and the semicolons and how you basically you write it is called syntax. Right, it's kind of like in a language how you have to write sentences a certain way uh, using punctuation and grammar, or else they, it technically isn't correct if you're in English class. It's very similar. You have to do it this way or else the computer won't understand what you're saying. If you forget a semicolon, it won't know that um, what you're doing is done. It'll think, like, let's say we forgot this one. It'll think that these two are one thing and um, might get confused. So what we'll do is put in the semicolon on the end of each line where it's necessary. Not all lines need it, as you can see. These do, these don't, this one doesn't. And uh, we'll explain that more in a later lesson, but I just thought I'd let you know that it is important to uh, put in the right punctuation, so to say. And you could also take out these spaces and it would be the same. You could put in 100 spaces and it won't change anything. It's just important to get the parentheses, semicolons, dots, equal signs, commas, all that stuff, colons. Alright, so what we're going to do is circle.graphics.endfill. This tells uh, our program that we're all done uh, doing draw functions to it. And it should work, right? Well, what you can do is you can press this right here, or the button is F5. Alright, and it should run the program through what's called a Compiler, all right. So Flash Develop is an IDE, Integrated Development Environment. It's kind of hard to say it for some strange reason. Basically, it's an editor, which allows you to edit your stuff. A compiler, which actually puts it out into readable format, all in one. And as you can see, our project shows nothing. All right. If you had problems, errors, or anything, make sure that your code is correct. And if it is, that means that there's probably something wrong with your flash develop, in which case put a comment in the comments below this video and I will get back to you, try to help you fix your problem. All right, so we made a circle 
Why isn't it showing? That's because we forgot to do one thing. All right, we just have a variable, all right? This is like having a piece of bread, all right? It's not actually going to toast unless you put in the toaster. So in the same way, it's not, this circle isn't going to display unless you actually put it in the program. This is called add child. It's another function. These are called functions if they have um, the, the brackets or the parentheses around them. And um, we're going to put in circle, all right? So this will actually put our circle on the screen. So if we run it again, and it should definitely run faster the second time, you'll see that we kind of have a circle here. All right, the thing is, the x and y coordinates, we put it to zero, but the circle draws from the middle of it, all right? So what we can do is do, well, we can do this two different ways. We can either modify the x and y values right here where we created them, or we can do circle.x equals 100 and circle.y equals 100. You, you could just erase these two lines. I advise you to do this after the tutorial is done and put them in here and you'll see that it does the exact same thing. This is just two different ways of doing it. So run it again and you'll see that the center of the circle is at 100 by 100 pixels. All right, so we've drawn our circle. It's all working. That's pretty much the end of the first tutorial. All right, next time we will get a bit more in depth um, learning about the structure of you know, ActionScript 3, how you're supposed to do things in it, uh, explain what this main is, what, why it, it says extends, what void is, all that great stuff in the next lesson. Thank you for joining in, and we hope to have the next lesson posted within the next week. Catch you later.